Can I swear? Yes, you can. Can I be racist? <laughs> no. <laughs> I remember when I was younger and I had a massive issue with the inability to simply go up to a woman that I found attractive and just opening my mouth and speaking to her. I remember in school, I had a crush on the same girl for three years. And for three years, I did not once go up to her and just tell her how I felt. And this naturally transitioned into my adult life as well. As I continue to grow up and as I continue to scale up my dating options, I would see attractive women in the street. I would have such a massive barrier of entry to just go up and speak to her. And you know what? If I did break through that barrier of entry and I actually did go up to her, I would then run into another massive issue, which is simply, what the fuck do I say? What words do I say to make this woman attracted to me? I don't up drawing a complete blank and it would be super awkward for both of us and I'd usually end up walking away wanting to fucking shoot myself in the head because of how embarrassing that was. If every time that you see an attractive woman, you get these physical symptoms of crippling anxiety, your heart is pumping out of your chest, you're sweating profusely, and you go up to her with this super awkward energy, eventually you do that enough times that you end up not actually talking to women. It's actually far easier to not talk to women than go through the pain of feeling that embarrassed again. Which is where I think a lot of young men find themselves. They get burnt and stung a few times by women, their first times approaching women, and they end up never doing it. Which leads me to introduce my friend here, Luke. I've brought him onto this video specifically because Luke is genuinely like one of the most outgoing people I've ever met. And he's someone who, when he sees a woman, it's like that for him. He, he sees a woman, he's attracted to her, he goes up, he talks to her. And I've seen the full spectrum of this I've seen you fucking getting burnt really hard like a conversation <laughs> it's like a five second conversation and then you walk away you just get rejected literally. like yeah. straight up it yeah happened shit happens yesterday bro it happened just yesterday <laughs> but then I've seen the other extreme side where like he goes up to a woman and you guys are fucking chatting away for like 20-30 minutes you get the Instagram you go on dates and you have a fucking great time together so yeah swings and roundabouts mate sometimes swings. you get rejected you know you get a drink thrown in your face whatever <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It's not happened to me yet, but you know, you, you get rejected sometimes, sometimes it goes well. And I actually really admire that about you, Luke, because that is something which I have historically struggled with, like just having the, the amount of outgoingness to literally go up to women and be so unbothered whether you get rejected or if things go well, you just see an opportunity and you're like, I'm gonna take it. Throughout your life, you've had periods of time where you've struggled with women or like you've been like as not as good with women, you know? Yes. But like how, I, I, I wanna like just pick your brains <clears throat> in this video so that the boys can see as well. What does that transition look like? How do you go from someone who isn't as outgoing with women and you, maybe you're a bit nervous of getting rejected and stuff and then transforming it the situation you're in where you're like really fucking good with women now. Yeah, I just, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> like I, if, I, if I see someone, most of the time I'll just go and speak to them because that's sort of where I'm at now. But you're right, it, it hasn't always been like this. Uh, playing Minecraft eight hours a day, like League of Legends, you know, oh, just yeah. hardcore gaming 24 <laughs> seven. I'd only speak to a girl by accident in like a Gary's Mod chat room by accident. Oh yeah. So or like in, in like some Discord chat, like I, when a she, girl would join. She, she, she opens her mic for a split second, you hear a girl noise. You go, like, is that a girl? Is that a girl? <laughs> Yeah, and instantly, all the, instantly, all the all the boys are like on their best behavior, like showing off. And oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that that's sort of like where I've come from. <laughs> that's where I come from. That's that shit I've been on, bro. That's that type of shit I've been on. Humble yeah. beginnings, bro. Yeah. So, I, so I used to be a really big gamer, um, and then I just start. <laughs> There is hope! There's hope for you! Sorry, bro. Fuck. Yeah, no. I stumbled into a relationship when I was like 16, somehow. Yeah, that, that gave me a lot of info about girls and stuff. I think I was like 15, 16. We started, like, I started going out with my friends a bit more off of the computer games, like actually in the real world. Nice. Like going to parks and stuff, like as you do as a kid. <laughs> being delinquents in the park. Yeah, yeah. being delinquents, you know, <laughs> just drinking and shit. Like, oh, I'm not even doing that. Like, we weren't like that. So I stumbled into my first relationship I didn't really know how I was trying to keep the relationship going I learned a lot about girls and like how unpredictable they can be and how emotional they are and like the ups and downs but yeah obviously some of you guys probably don't know how to stumble into 
a relationship, right? Yeah, it's not, it's not easy, right? A lot of guys, they, they have like a really slow start in life. Mm. Maybe they're a little bit like shy, a little bit introverted. That's enough to like just get them in like a negative feedback loop where they don't even have the opportunity to like speak with women. That's certainly what, what the case was for me. Like I was like just like slightly slow guy and that was enough for me to like be a bit outcast. And then with that, I started to like <clears throat> fall down like the video game rabbit hole and then I got addicted to that and I just had no social finesse at all. So I didn't really have any opportunity to speak to women but I, I think, think that's so common man 100 percent, 100 percent. and i think really if you're wanting to get better with women you need to start being around women so what i would suggest really is if you're trying to like get better at something anything you need to put in the time you need to put in the reps you need to expose yourself to it i would get rejected well, i still do get rejected quite often i'm not the tallest guy i'm like 5'8 i've got a big nose that's wonky. I don't always say the right thing. I embarrass myself quite a lot. That stuff sort of doesn't matter because if you're expecting every interaction to go amazing and you're expecting every girl to like be interested in you, all these expectations, you, you're just gonna be um, setting yourself up for failure basically because you're expecting things to go a certain way and oftentimes things don't go the way you're expecting, right? If you wanna get over the fear of being rejected, if you just don't have any expectations from an interaction, what are you worried about? Like you go up to a guy, mm -hmm. you say hi, you go up with the intention of like just wanting to interact with them, not like yeah. I have to, I have to fuck on fucking I need her Instagram, Instagram and I need, I need her Instagram. To, yeah. If you're yeah. setting up this, these like expectations in your head, like you're making the barrier of entry to you literally just going up and speaking to that girl like so fucking high because it's like, oh my God, I have to do this and this and this. When the reality is like, all you have to do is put one step in front of the other, go up and say, hello, my name's Sam. That's it. Yeah, and that's, that's what it. you say most of the time when you go to a girl. Like, yeah, I, I, I actually <laughs> ask Luke autistically, like Luke, you talk to all these girls. What do you fucking say? My name's Luke. This is literally it. Yeah. And guys, it's secret guys are game. obsessed Shh. over this. Yeah. Don't tell oh, anyone. Crazy. Go, go, I go this up. one pickup yeah. line will get Don't your dick sucked 16 Shh. times a year. Cut the video now. Cut the video. <laughs> We've said too much. Yeah, so if I'm approaching a girl, I'll literally just go up and I'll just look her in the eyes and say hi and introduce myself and just start a conversation. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. I think a lot of guys, when they get rejected, they sort of recluse. What's the word? Like, like recoil. They, they, they like recoil into themselves, right? Hating women and they don't want to get rejected and they don't want to approach women because oh, it's going to damage their ego if she yeah, says no so and shit. You know? Yeah, exactly. But you got to understand like you're not going to get along with everyone in the world. Some people you will get along with. So approaching a woman, I have that mindset of I've got nothing to lose, everything to gain. All that I'm going to lose is, oh, if she rejects me, okay, am I going to take it personally? Because really it's not that personal. Well, the next girl will like me right yeah the next girl i approach will be different you know and trying to not get hung up on like she rejected me therefore it means i'm ugly and i smell i'm not tall enough and you know like i don't look a certain way getting hung up on that stuff is really pointless because for one you'll never know why she rejected you in the first place even if you ask her and she tells you she's not going to tell you the truth mm. and whatever answer you get is it's going to be pointless and Two, those things don't really matter. She's rejected you, she's not interested. Move on, go to the next girl. And I think a lot of guys get hung up on like the one-itis. Like they fall in love with a girl, they're head over heels. I'm they so want... bad for that, bro. Bro, I'm so I, bad I, for I was that. me like, as well. I see, yeah. I see like one woman and I'm like, oh, I'm just like, I'm making my our life together in, in my yeah. head in that moment. Like, oh yeah, fucking white picket fence, 16 sons and all yeah. this shit. I'm seeing this yeah, one girl yeah, yeah. and I'm, I'm, like, I'm banking so much on it. There's so many different women which would fit into that category for you and not just one. There's so many. Yeah. So like just going yeah. all in on this one girl that you see in the street, which I'm so fucking bad for like i just oh, oh she's perfect she's yeah. my wife like it's not the case like you'll find that there's actually a massive variety of women who would fit your perfect like woman you know like your your soulmate yeah 100 percent. and i think a lot of women they when, when you do find the right woman um she does want to be a part of your world in a relationship there's always going to be that sort of give and take and like molding around each other and understanding each other trying to find someone that's perfect and ticks every single box from the very beginning, like, oh, she has to do this, has to do that, and she has to dress like this, is a surefire way to stay single for so fucking long. So Because fucking you're never gonna get someone that ticks every single box straight away. Yeah. And even if you do find someone that ticks every single box straight away, when you approach them, you're gonna be like, 
because you're so overwhelmed. You're so you're so overwhelmed thinking she's fucking perfect. I oh have God, to make this right. Make work, that you oh. become just a blob of like emotions and a mess, and you can't even just speak to her. My best bit of advice would be to just start flirting with the world and start interacting this and having so conversations great. with everyone and everything, and just get used to speaking, like talking with people. Yeah, that's something I've noticed with you. Even if the waiter is like a 66 year old woman well beyond her prime. <laughs> you're not gonna do this to me now are well, you well no, beyond no. Her prime you're still like flirtatious but in like such a playful way with no expectation of course you're not gonna take back this 66 year old lady who has six grandsons already i'll give her a seven <laughs> But like you're very, you're very good at that though. Like you play, yeah, just you like having the fun. world. You have like open dialogue. You're the sort of dude who sees a cute dog and you just say it outright. That's a cute dog. Instead of most yeah. people, they might walk around and think like in their head, oh, that's a cute dog. I wish I would have said that out loud and maybe that would have yeah. striked up some sort of conversation around me, some sort of interaction, but yeah. they don't. They keep it to themselves. Exactly. And sticking on that example, say the 66 year old ladies walk in the cute dog and you say it. Say, oh, cute dog. Maybe next time you bump into someone walking a dog, it's yeah. a cute girl. And you go, oh, it's a cute dog. Yeah. And it's easy for you to, I think you call it social lubrication. Social lubrication. Where you're sort of prepared mentally. You can do it, you can be normal, you can talk. I find I've changed how I behave and interact with the world the more time I've spent with you. Someone who is like very charismatic and open. Opposite to me really, I'm not saying I'm not charismatic, but like I don't open myself up as much. I'm usually mm. like, you know, more keeping to myself. I'm a bit more in my own head. The more time I've spent around people like you, I've started to open up more and I've realized the world isn't out to get me. Like if I interact with people around me, they're not just going to like look at me weird and just think I'm a weirdo. I think this is like, no. this is like no. kind of a symptom of growing up in Birmingham. <laughs> oh, ironic. Yeah, the UK will instill that fear of judgment oh God, in you so bad. So bad in the UK. Where you don't want to fucking do anything because you you know someone's going to judge you for yeah, it or someone's going to speak about you to their mum. Just to summarize, like, so, how do we get over the fear of rejection like you know oh my god why have you've I got, got to get rejected because then you won't be scared of it so you think it's just straight up numbers like it's actually a skill that you need to level up the idea of getting rejected is like a skill so if you get rejected yeah. it's actually a rep and you're like you're yeah. gaining xp honestly i think it would be a very very useful exercise to go out and try and get rejected just go out without brushing your teeth or some shit no 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 <laughs> I'm not talking about like you don't shower, you know. Oh, okay. You go out like wearing like tramp clothes, like, like a, a bin bag. Sack, yeah. yeah, you go out wearing a fucking potato sack with like scruffy hair. I'm not saying that. I'm saying go out normal into the world, ask for things that you wouldn't normally ask for. If you're able to do that though, you're able to just approach people at that point, and that's not a problem. The problem is like the barrier of entry to even begin is there because the fear of rejection. But what you're saying is you need to just brute force your way through that and just be like, fucking send it anyway. And eventually... rejection's not real. It's in your fucking head. It's not real. It's in your head. <laughs> it's not real. It's not real. It can't hurt you. <laughs> We've got so little time here on fucking earth. I don't want to get woo woo philosophical and shit, but like I would hate to look back in 30 years and have so much regret because I didn't approach that girl and I didn't ask for like the things that I wanted and interacted in the way that I wanted. Mm. Because now I, I get regret if I don't like approach someone that I wanted to approach or if I don't say something that I wanted to say. I get a lot of regret thinking, why didn't I say that? And I think regret is, is a very powerful tool to help you push you into the way of life you want to live. For example, a couple of weeks ago, I saw a beautiful woman, beautiful Thai girl. I didn't approach her. I missed my opportunity. She she left and I went my way. And then afterwards I was like, fuck, mm. why, why didn't I just go speak to her? Bro, I got that so fucking often. This is a scenario, you walk up to her. The worst thing that happens is she says, oh, I'm, I'm not interested. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's like, she's like, I got a boyfriend. She's letting you down easy, you know. I got a boyfriend. Or she's like, I don't speak English. Yeah, whatever. It's fine. I'm. It's cool. Or she goes, Oh hi. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you for coming up to me. And you have a nice conversation, and then you get her contact, and then you go from there. Worst thing that happens is she says no. You just go back to your day. Yeah, and back you just to whatever you're doing. 
Yeah. But like if you, you if on. you wasn't to approach her, that's literally gonna be sat in your mind all fucking day. Yeah. You're gonna be like, oh yeah. my god, that fucking girl, I didn't approach her. She could have been my wife. One hundred But we could have had a family. Yeah, I'm picturing like <laughs> this could be my wife. Yeah. Like this could be my wife. Fuck. Imagine I just let her walk away out of my life. Shit, that's regretful, man. Yeah, that's rough. That's like the mental side of things. Getting over the fear of rejection. But like, what about how you look, how you feel, your confidence. Like, how do you navigate that? I know for a fact there's times where I sort of let myself go a bit and like, I don't shave and like, maybe I fucking don't have a shower or whatever. And it's during those times where I feel the least confident and the least outgoing. And there's a direct correlation there, no? Yeah, definitely. How you, how you feel is to some degree based on how you carry yourself, what you look like. Yeah, and it's also how mental. You smell. It's also mental, how you perceive it, yourself. It, exactly, exactly. If you're dressing smart, you're smelling good, some aftershave on, you're bedazzled with some jewelry and some fucking, yeah, some fucking, fucking necklaces, rings. Yes. If you're feeling good about yourself, it does bring up your mood. Yeah. It sounds like materialistic, but it's true. No, it doesn't it's have to true. be materialistic. Like you don't have to like spend a bunch of money to look good. Yeah. Have the basics taken care of, right? You need to be showering. You need to be brushing your fucking teeth. I can smell you through this fucking YouTube video. <laughs> smell your mouth breathing on the screen. <laughs> Brush your teeth. And your tongue. I don't, I'm controversial, I don't brush my tongue that much. I can I should. <laughs> 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 fucking walked into that. <laughs> Fuck. Your hygiene, your cleanliness. Make sure your clothes aren't all like ripped and shit. They're not like stained or anything. They fit well. They that's fit well, that's a big one. Bro, I can They're be wearing... tailored, fucking... Yeah, yeah I, I can be wearing shit which is like of a lower quality, but as long as it fucking fits well, I yeah. feel good. Yeah, because then it, it, like you said, it, mentally it builds you up and you think, fuck yeah, I'm someone that's yeah. that's worthy of speaking to this beautiful girl. Fuck yeah. Because I'm I'm not worthy as a man, no. That's like a lot of a lot of uh... <laughs> Lisa, I am worthy. Got your hands and dude. Please let me speak to you, woman. <laughs> My love, may I please have a word. <laughs> may I please have a word. May I please I beg you for a moment of your time. <laughs> May I trouble you for a moment of your time? <laughs> Look good, feel good, baby. Look good, feel good. But what about the things which someone might not be able to do anything about? Because there's a lot of guys who are super nihilistic. For example, I've got insecurities. I've got a big forehead. I don't like my forehead. To me, there's scenarios where that fucking completely shatters my confidence when I'm thinking about, oh, I've got a big forehead. Ooh, it's a bit windy and my fucking fringe is blowing around, whatever it is. Like, you've got things about you which you can't change. How do you get past that? It makes me think of my history teacher and what he said once. He said to the class, you should only make fun of people for things that they can control. So you should make fun of people? Yeah. <laughs> if someone's short, that's something they can't control. You, you shouldn't make fun of them for that. If they're fat, it's fair game. <laughs> There will be people watching this who hear you say that and are like, yeah, sure, you can't change it, but it doesn't change the reality that it affects my ability and my attractiveness towards women. For example, you mentioned earlier you're five foot eight. A lot of guys watching this, they might be like, oh, well, I'm fucking, I'm five foot eight and oh, I have no chance of girls and I have a super nihilistic mindset and I can't yeah. approach her yeah. because I'm too short and she's going to think I'm too short. And this is obviously stuff which you've overcome mentally because mm. you can't overcome it physically unless you fucking Got a medieval stretching device. Yeah, the fucking. Yeah. Oh, I get stretched <laughs> yeah. out like this. So you've overcome it mentally. How? Yeah. What does that look like? Because, like I say, you are someone yeah. who is so outgoing, and you see a woman, you approach her, and you're not thinking in your head, "Am I worthy of approaching this girl?" Because I'm too short to be her boyfriend or whatever the fuck. That's not an issue for you. Mm. How do other guys emulate those sort of results? I think it's tricky, right? Because you say that I don't get these thoughts. I do. Really. Yeah, I do. I'll see a beautiful girl and I'll think, fuck, she's fit. I want to go speak to her. And then it, my brain starts thinking like, oh no, Luke, she probably likes really tall guys that are fucking jacked, you know, with a fucking BMW Lamborghini <laughs> with like a fucking big mansion. Because I'm thinking like, she's like a top 1% girl in my eyes. Therefore, she only is going to go for a top 1% so guy. A pedestal. To some degree, yeah. yeah. So these thoughts, I think it's important to know that you are going to get these thoughts coming up. Mm. Like, I don't think you're ever going to just completely squash them. But I think how you react to them and how you deal with them in your head gets better and better and you become more able to not cope with them but like 
end the thought loops. For example, sticking with, I see a beautiful girl, oh, she probably likes tall guys. My mind then goes, why, why the hell am I thinking that? I'm writing myself off before I've even tried. Mm. Maybe she fucking loves short guys. Yeah. And I'm not even that short. I'm just slightly below average, thank you very much. Black-pilled. <laughs> yeah. So I think, it's, I think it's important to understand that you get better at dealing with these negatives and these insecurities. And eventually it will get to the point where you're a lot more comfortable with yourself and who you are mm. and the things that you value. And you'll realize that when you're really self-assured and you're confident in yourself, that's really what matters. You can walk up to her and be like, hey, my name's Luke. I'm Silver 3 on League of Legends after eight years of playing it. What's your name? <laughs> Is it, like you're assured, you're confident, right? Yeah. She's gonna be like, what the fuck? Hi, Luke, I'm Jeanette. <laughs> like it's, it's how you say these things and like how you carry yourself, right? If you're like scared and you think what you're doing isn't right and like, oh, I'm short, therefore she's like, I'm nervous and all that stuff. It really is just a mindset shift to become okay with your insecurities, which isn't an easy thing to do, right? They're insecurities. You've probably been made fun of like your whole life for it. I know I have, like I got a big ass nose and it leans to the fucking left as well. It's wonky, so it's big and it's wonky. <laughs> so there's like two things right in the middle of my face as well. So it's an easy target. If I let it bring me down, I would be depressed. I would be locked in my house every day and I would be living a life that I fucking hate. So I literally have just become better at realizing, okay, the things I can change, I will change. I'll go to the gym. I'll start doing fun stuff, riding motorbikes and fucking traveling the world fuck yeah making money fuck yeah like things that i have direct control over like my my style my clothes my watch rings stuff like that and things like oh my height i can't change okay forget about it my nose i can't change okay forget about it that's the most important part though is just forgetting about it if you're consciously carrying yourself as someone and it's like a part of your identity that mm. oh i am a five foot eight guy with a big nose you're not going to carry that energy which is required to actually attract a woman yeah you're exactly gonna be so full of <clears throat> uncertainty and women are like yeah literally biologically fucking designed to see through a man's bullshit because she she wants a man who is secure in himself and secure in the fact that he is going to be able to provide and protect and secure her. Mm -hmm. And so women have an incredible fucking ability to see through men's shit. Yeah. So if you're carrying yourself with this fake facade, people are going to see through it. They can you sense need to it. genuinely like forget about your insecurities because they're so fucking yeah. irrelevant before you yeah. even begin approaching women. 100%. Because girls, they're so spiritually, emotionally tuned. Yeah. They can tell when there's something on the back of your mind. They can tell when you're anxious about something in your approach and like you feel like unworthy or a bit insecure this is where girls are so much better than guys for understanding things and reading between the lines and seeing things that aren't physically there but are mentally there right it's almost like a different dimension of like spirituality and emotion that they can tap into women are incredible spiritually bro. i'm super jealous yeah. man whereas guys is just like boobs hit rock fun <laughs> beer <laughs> motorbikes Boobs, bacon, bacon, boobs, and jarred pickles. <laughs> How you're saying these things and the vibe you're coming across as is way more important. It's not about what you say, it's about how you say it. So being able to just convey what you mean is better than saying it word for word exactly how it should be phrased or yeah. written in a book. You know, life is a bit more gray than black and white. So now that we know that a lot of men's issues with approaching women is simply just a mental block, another mental block people might run into is this idea, especially in Western countries now, women don't want to be approached. They want to be just left alone they're doing their workout just leave them alone bullshit Don't talk to them. bullshit women are dying to be approached here's the picture dating apps have been around for what like a decade now almost everyone is trying to find a partner on a dating app that's just the norm how it is now you know you swipe you talk for a bit you have your little talking stage so cringe um you you graduate to fucking instagram or snapchat you talk a bit more, <laughs> you go meet up, you have a drink, fuck on the first date, and then you think, oh yeah, I can have a relationship with you. Uh, that way of like connecting is so normal now that if you as a guy walk up to a girl and introduce yourself and just start a conversation, instantly you've set yourself apart from all the other fucking guys she's interacted with. That's a really good point. Like it's never been 
easier to actually It's just... so fucking easy. Fuck. I shouldn't be telling you this, because I'm five foot eight with a big wonky nose. If you guys start doing this, I'm out of fucking it's so girls. Over, bro. Uh, it's so over for me. <laughs> if you guys, because I bet some of you are sitting there like, you're six foot, you know, if you went to the gym a few times, you'd be fucking, you'd be a player. So guys, don't, so, don't approach women. Don't, in, don't yeah, implement any on, advice. Just, stay on a day and Don't, <laughs> don't change, don't improve. <laughs> That's See, a really good point though, it's, it's, it's literally that easy to stand out amongst so the rest easy. of men. Like this was normal literally 50 years ago. Yeah. Dudes yeah. would just see an attractive woman, go up and talk to her. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, Even you have to watch a fucking hour long YouTube video <laughs> to to get the fucking like the- How do I talk to a girl? <laughs> Come on, you just fucking, you, you've been talking to your mum your whole life. You've been talking to your sisters, your brothers, your family. You know how to speak to people. Like it's so true, it's never been easier to just go up to a girl and stand out because no one fucking does it anymore and you said 50 years ago this probably was like 20 years ago it was really common before yeah. like smartphones i would say yeah smartphones and how we interact like because 20 years ago people weren't popping up over email like hey uh, like hey you don't know me <laughs> my name is jared 447 at <laughs> yahoo.co.uk Yeah, you make a good boy. 20 years ago, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, so even, this is such a recent thing. Yeah, we, we are so fucking crippled by our own technology. We've become tools to our, our tools that badly that we've lost the ability to literally do the most basic of things, which is to go up to a woman and talk to her. And mm. social media has psyoped young men into believing that yes, if you want a healthy dating life, you stay on the internet, you go on your dating apps, you buy your premium services, you stay consuming, you don't go up to the girl in the gym because she wants to be left alone. It's bullshit. It is bullshit. And that, that idea is pushed forward by fat, smelly feminists who don't get approached by guys anyway. And they've got the <laughs> ugliest, most man-hating personality you could possibly imagine. That mm. is why they push that message because they do not like men. And I'm telling you right now, women do want to be they approached. Do. And if you're willing to do the hard thing, you get better results for it. You get better than average. Average is uh, fucking optimizing your Tinder profile, taking some cool photos and trying to do the fucking Tinder game. Better than average, if you want to stand out, literally just cultivate the ability to see a beautiful woman in the street, go up and talk to her. It is as simple as that. You gain this ability after you defeat all of these mental blockades which you have put upon yourself and that society's put upon yourself. Go over the fear of rejection. Build your self-image. Build your mental model which actually serves you and destroy the limiting beliefs that women don't want to be approached because they absolutely do. They're dying to be approached. They're like, oh my god, when is a fucking man gonna come into my life? A man, not a boy, who is scared to fucking just come up and talk to me i'm out here <laughs> it's so easy now yeah if you're if, I've, I've, if you're just able to get over the fear of rejection and the idea that the if fear you get of rejection is the biggest your one. life is fucking over and you just get rejected and you say oh well she probably has a boyfriend which is a very empowering thing to think by the way like if you just get rejected by a girl just assume she has a boyfriend then it's just not personal mm. it's just never personal then yeah, oh she didn't like me personal. she must have it's a boyfriend personal. next next mm -hmm. next next and then one out of five well actually you'll have a decent conversation with one out of ten maybe you get her instagram one out of 50 will be a girlfriend literally just think of it as a numbers game like that you very quickly get over this idea of like oh my god this woman's rejecting me my life is fucking over mm -hmm. it's just numbers then it's simple plenty of fish in the sea plenty of fish and i'll say one thing as well i did the dating apps i did like tinder bumble hinge paid for tinder platinum for two months as well. I don't want no, this to come across idea. bad, no. but the quality of women you find on these apps compared to the quality of women I interact with when I actually go speak to them is apples and oranges. These, these women in person are miles more interested in me, more engaged at trying to like have a relationship potentially, actually more attractive half of the time as well compared mm. to these dating apps. These dating apps, they're just, they're just a sack of shit. They are just, there's so many videos you can watch on why they're just flawed and how they're really skewed in women's favor. I think it's like for every one girl on the app, there's like 10 guys. Whereas in person, there's one girl and if you approach her, I guarantee you 10 other guys haven't approached her that day yeah. or that week. Yeah, literally week. Yeah, probably even a fucking month. These girls are like, 
Unless she's like a 10 out of 10, big tits out all the time, she's probably not getting approached. She's probably not getting approached either because guys will see her and think, oh, she's way out of my league and then they won't approach her. Yeah. When in reality, uh, that's she's another not, thing she's as not well. been approached for like six months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> she's crazy. too hot. Yeah. Too the guys hot, right? disqualify themselves. Yeah. How crazy is that? It's mad, right? The, the real battle is you versus you. Because the reason you disqualify yourself is, oh, I'm sure I got a big nose. Yeah. She's not going to be into me. You're making up her mind for her. You're deciding these things for her. And you're shooting yourself in the foot. Like, it's just you versus you. Yeah. And so when many, you realize so many that, guys, it's so good. So many guys do that as well. And that's why they don't approach. So you, you're literally onto such a winner if you're able to overcome these fucking... Yeah. These mental obstacles. That's literally all this is. It's just mental mm -hmm. obstacles. That's stopping you from approaching a woman. You have legs. Literally. It you is, all have legs. One yeah. You have legs. You're not... You're not fucking, <clears throat> there's nothing stopping you physically from walking up to her it's all in your brain if you yeah. master your brain you will have no problem speaking to women i'll give you i'll give you a tip on that ex as well exactly like you said you have fucking legs if you start overthinking after you see a beautiful woman something i always do is just start walking over I don't, i'm not even thinking about what i'm gonna say like right before i do it i'm like oh should i shouldn't i i just start walking by the time i get over there i have to say something like or else i just or else i just walk up to her and i'm like <laughs> I just walk up. Like, <laughs> some people say the technique is like, oh, you count down from three in your head and walk over That's and you don't enough. think. Really, just whatever advice works for you to get you to just fucking walk over to a girl. And you know what? Even if you walk over and you just look at her like a dead fish and then you fucking panic and walk away, that's still a PR, bro. Bro, that's <laughs> 100%. 100%. That's still a PR, bro. That's still a the fucking barrier, PR. The barrier of entry to grow is literally you using your legs to walk over to a girl. Yeah. How insane is that? It's easy. It's fucking easy. <laughs> You, you, that, you, should, that should really excite you guys watching this. All I have to do to see massive growth, you can do this today after closing this video. Use your legs to walk up to a girl that you see you find attractive. And even if you look like a, re uh, you look like a retard, it's not that deep, it's never that deep. But if you just walk up and by the time you get there, you're just like, walk away, <laughs> which I'm, fucking, I'm pretty fucking certain I've done a few times in my life. I've just, I've went up to a girl with the intent to talk to her, I go up and I'm like, walk away again. It mm. fucking happens. It fucking happens. That is a PR. That is your barrier of mm. entry to growth is to use your legs to walk up to a girl. That should yeah. really fucking excite you. Because that's easy game. Sorry, wheelchair users. Yeah, you can wheel over. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Yeah, if you can do a wheelie over to her as Mate, well. That's fucking that's, awesome. that's hard. That's awesome. She's gonna fall in love with you, bro. Fuck yeah. The real battle, it's always been you versus you. And you fucking know this as well. If you're watching self-development, you know it's your, it's all you. It's always been you. If you wanna learn how to make money, <laughs> stop it. If you want to learn how to make money online from the comfort of your bedroom or traveling the world with your laptop, you can join over 500 of my students doing exactly that right now. As you can see here, we're getting excellent results inside of my academy. You could be next. Thank you for joining me, Luke. Bye. Bye.